Hi everyone, Eric Stockland again with Charter Bay Home Builders and in this video in our Chinese drywall remediation series we're going to cover how to actually take the drywall samples that are required per Judge Fallon's order if you ever expect that you're going to be in a court of law uh, trying to recover damages for Chinese drywall in your home. There are specific requirements and that's what we're going to talk about today. Per Judge Fallon's order you're required to take at least two 10 by 10 samples of every type of drywall that you see in the home. You'll want to consult with your attorney because most likely your attorney will want you to do something a little more um, advanced than that. They'll want more samples. In this particular home, the attorney actually would like to have one piece from every single wall in the home. So we'll have, we'll have quite a few 10 by 10 pieces of drywall in this particular house. Per Judge Fallon's order, you only need two of each, but you'll want to consult with your attorney. So the way we do it is some people are actually recommending that before demolition you go through and you take a 10 by 10 of every single wall. The problem with that in my opinion statistically is that you'll get a good portion of your samples that don't have anything on them. It might all be Chinese drywall but you won't have markings on all of those pieces. So the way we do it in line with our last video which talked about the removal of the drywall and the photographing the other person who will be there, there'll be one person taking photographs, the other person looking for samples. That person, if this particular board gets flipped over and it says made in China, will very quickly take this 10 by 10 masonite template and their quick cutter and they'll just slap it onto the piece of drywall and cut it out. Very quick, very easy, and it doesn't slow down the construction process too much, the demolition. Once that piece has come off, that person who is collecting samples will then have to take and put the samples into baggies, they'll be bigger than this, but before they do that, they have to put a sample label right on that piece of drywall, and it has to have the basic information we've talked about already, owner's name, the address, the date it was taken, the room, in this case it's three, the wall, in this case it'd be B, and what it was. This is a 10 by 10 drywall and you can circle it. Take this one label and put it onto the drywall. You then put that drywall into a large Ziploc bag, seal it up. You then put an exact replica of that same label onto this bag. So you've got two labels per drywall sample and you pop that into another Ziploc and seal it. For all of the sample evidence that you take from the property, the only evidence that requires two labels is the drywall 10 by 10 pieces. That's how you actually go through the home and take the drywall. So in our case, what we'll do is if we flip the first one and we get made in China, we'll take it and then we won't have to do it for the rest of the wall. When we get to this one, we wait until we see made in China or Knopf or, or whatever the indicator is. We take that sample, we bag it, and we don't have to do anything else for that wall. Judge Fallon also requires that you get at least one sample of each piece of edge tape from each type of drywall in the home. Some of these will have colored edge tape, some of them may be clear, some of them may have markings. Every single kind of end tape that you see from the drywall, you need to collect a sample of that also. It also needs to be labeled, it also needs to be double bagged. So those are, during the process, how you will actually collect drywall and end tape samples. That's how you, uh, that's how you do it per Judge Fallon's order. Until next time, this is Eric with Charter Bay Home Builders.